Hello, and welcome to Vavork. I'm Brian Watrous. This is the second part in a three-part video series in which I'm demonstrating how to deploy a VMware vRealize Operation 6.6 cluster. In the previous video, I demonstrated how to deploy the master node. In this video, I'm going to de demonstrate how to deploy two additional data nodes. And then in the following video, we'll take a look at how to cluster them together. What we have at this point is a single VROPS node, but what we have set out to do in this video is to configure an entire cluster. So what we'll do next is deploy two additional VROPS nodes. Both of these are going to be data collector nodes, and we'll do so following a very similar process. To install our two data collector nodes, we'll go back to the vSphere web client, and in the vSphere web client, we're going to follow essentially the same process. Again, we'll right-click on the data center. We'll choose Deploy OVF Template. Once again, we've already downloaded the OVF file, so we'll select Local File and click Browse. We'll select the OVF file itself and click Open. Then we'll click Next to continue. We'll give a name for our second VROPS node. And again, we'll specify where we want the VROPS node virtual appliance installed. Once again, we're going to choose Data Center. On the next screen, we'll once again choose our host called SA-ESXi-02. We'll click Next. On the Details screen, once again, it reports to us that we can deploy VROPS into a smaller configuration by choosing thin provisioning. In real-world deployments, you would most likely choose thick, but in our demonstration, we will once again choose thin. Once again, we'll accept the end-user license agreement and continue to the next screen. And as before, it's important that we select extra small to match the size of the master node that we previously deployed. All of the nodes in the vRealize Operations cluster need to be the same size. So we've selected Extra Small. We'll continue by clicking Next. As before, we're going to choose Thin Provisioned for our virtual disk. We'll install our virtual appliance, the new vROPS node, into our data store once again. We'll click Next to continue. Once again, we'll select the Management Network. We'll click Next to continue. And we will configure the network settings for this second node. This node will be at a slightly different IP address. It'll be at .182 instead of .181. And once again, we will not choose IPv6, but we will choose to configure our time zone. We'll click Next to continue. And we'll click Finish to deploy our second node. Now while it deploys that second node, let's go ahead and deploy the third node with the same process again. So we'll select, right-click our data center. We'll choose Deploy OVF Template. We'll choose Local File, then click Browse. We'll select our OVF file. We'll click Open. We'll continue by clicking Next. We'll name our node. We'll pick the data center as the location for our new virtual appliance. We'll click Next to continue. We'll choose the same host. We'll click Next to continue. Once again, we see the Details screen. We'll click Next to continue. We'll accept the End User License Agreement and click Next to continue. Once again, we'll choose Extra Small. All the nodes in a vRealize Operations cluster need to be the same size. We'll click Next to continue. We'll select Thin Provisioned. We'll select our Data Store. We'll click Next to continue. We'll select the Management Network. We'll click Next to continue. 
And once again, we'll set up our networking configuration. As before, we'll select Pacific for our time zone, click Next. Again, we have a summary screen. We'll review it, and when everything looks good, we'll click Finish to deploy the third VRealize Operations node. Now, as you can see, our second VROPS node has been deployed. Let's go to the recent task section just to make certain it looks completely deployed. In fact, it does. So we'll start up our second vRealize Operations node by powering it on. Right click, power, power on. And then we'll observe as the third vRealize Operations node is deployed. And once it is completely deployed, we will power it on too. Now that the third VRealize Operations node has been deployed, we will power it on by right-clicking it, choosing Power, then Power On. Once again, we'll give our second and third VRealize Operations nodes a few minutes to boot up, and then we'll continue with the configuration. Now that our second VRealize Operations node has had time to boot up, let's continue by configuring it using a, a technique very similar to what we used when configuring the master node. To configure the second node, we'll open up a new tab. And in the tab, once again, we'll type a URL that points to the node. Once again, we're continuing to use self-signed certificates, so we'll click Continue to this website. As you can see, we're greeted by the same screen that we saw when we configured the master node. When we configured the master node, we could have chosen either the first two choices. We could choose to perform an express installation or a new installation, but for all the non-master, all the subsequent deployments of nodes, we're going to choose instead expand an existing installation. As you can see, we're greeted by a diagram which illustrates the process that we're about to go through. We'll click Next to continue. Once again, we need to name this node. This is our second node, so we'll type VROPS2. And under Node Type, as you can see, we have two choices. We can choose to make this a data node or a remote collector node. One of the choices that you don't see here that you might expect to see is Master Replica. If you're intending to create a Master Replica, simply choose Data Node. We'll see shortly here how to appoint the Master Replica node. So we'll choose Data. Next, we need to supply the IP address or the FQDN of our Master node, which we'll do in this case, by typing our IP address, then we'll click Validate. As you can see, we've been returned the thumbprint of the master VROPS node. So if we were being very diligent, we would use that thumbprint that we see here and compare it to the thumbprint of the master. In our demonstration, we'll just assume that that is the correct finger thumbprint. We'll click Accept the Certificate, and then we'll click Next to Continue. Now, in order to join the cluster, this data node needs to do one of two things to authenticate to the master. We either need to supply the credentials for the admin account, or we can use something called a shared passphrase. We'll see the shared passphrase when we configure the third node. For the second node, we'll simply type the password that we supplied when we installed the master node. Then we'll click Next. On the Ready to Complete screen, once again, we see the diagram of the steps that we're performing. We'll click Finish, and we'll allow this node to be configured. 
While we wait for the second node to be configured, let's open up another tab. And this time we are going to type a URL which will point to our third VROPS node. Again, we are using self-signed certificates, so we'll click continue to this website. And once again, we're greeted by the screen, which allows us to configure the master by choosing either the first two choices, or since this is the, the uh, third VROPS node, we're going to choose expand an existing installation. Again, we see a diagram of the steps that we're about to perform. We'll click Next to continue. Again, we'll give this new node a name. Again, we'll choose data. And once again, we'll type the IP address of the master. We'll click validate. We'll accept the certificate that we received. Then we'll click next. When configuring the second node, we use the first choice, which is to supply the credentials of the admin account. This time we're going to use instead something called a shared passphrase. So we'll select use shared passphrase. And what we're going to do now is to leave this configuration screen for a moment. We're leaving the third node and going back to our master node. In the master node, there is an icon over here that allows us to generate the passphrase. So let's click that button. And as you can see, the passphrase can have a time limit specified. I'm going to specify one hour, which is sufficient for our purposes here. And additionally, the passphrase expires after one use. So in effect, what this passphrase does, which I get by clicking the Generate button, is it allows us to provide someone such as a junior admin a passphrase. Here's the passphrase. I'm going to copy it into my clipboard. The passphrase allows us to supply a junior administrator with a passphrase that they can use to deploy a node and join it into our vRealize Operations cluster. We don't have to entrust that junior administrator with the administrator credentials. Instead, we can just give the junior administrator this passphrase. So again, I'm copying the passphrase. I'm going to go back to the third node and I will paste in the passphrase. We'll click Next. Again, we see the steps that we're performing. We'll click Finish. And we'll allow the third node to be deployed. Now, while we wait for that third node to be deployed, let's go check in with the second node. And as you can see, the second node is aware of the existence of the master node. Uh, we do not yet see the third node, so we'll give it a few moments for it to show up too. Now that we've given the third node a sufficient amount of time to be configured, let's go to that third node. And as you can see, whether we're logged into the first node, the second node, or the third node, if we're logged into the admin interface, we can see all three nodes. We can see that one of them is the master, the other two are data nodes, we can see that all three are not running and they're all offline. Now that we've deployed our two data nodes, along with the master that we deployed in the previous video, that completes this video. Be sure to see the next video in which we're going to see how to take those three nodes and configure them into a vRealize Operations cluster for high availability.